Hello, I hope you can hear me. Maybe not, maybe yes. Um, but if not, anyways, we are today at the museum in Berkeley and film archive. Our main goal today was to see the Mexican film, as I mentioned earlier, called Victim of Sin, I believe. And so that is in about an hour and a half. So in the meanwhile, we get to go to the museum. It's included with a ticket to the film, which is great. Uh, almost reminds me of the Hammer Museum in Los Angeles. Or well, I should say Westwood, Los Angeles. But yes, that's very interesting. I once saw Claire Chase a uh, flute player doing quite a an amazing performance here and i think there was also um another artist as well i forget maybe from japan but regardless it's a beautiful museum and we will explore some exhibits today and i don't quite know or remember what this colored exhibit is I don't know if it was here before, but it is quite colorful and beautiful, wouldn't you say? Get a close-up of it here. How do we get the camera there? So there you can see, it's quite beautiful. Uh, take that, we can put a sharp filter on it. Not. Uh, we could put some additional filters if you like filters. I don't want all filters, but our filters are not loading up. I don't know why. We may be in a low bandwidth mode. It's thinking. I'm always looking for good filters. I don't like these face filters. Who wants this one? Is this the face? I don't even know. Oh, like I'm using the beauty effect. That's what's going on. I don't want the beauty effect. Off beauty effect. So, and now we'll get to it. That's what's going on. So what's this? Does this work? No, you need to find the face. Oh, yeah. So. Face. Say hi. I'm Mr. Computer. <laughs> Welcome to the museum today. Ah, ah, ah. See, it's... But anyways, here we are going, and the first exhibit that we will look at today is this one. What has been and what could be. So we will look to this. As you can see, it's got a description here, which we can read to you because we've got an hour and a half to kill before the movie starts. So, the camera, go back, turn off this. This should be an easy button. I have to scroll now. I don't know how to turn off. If I click twice, so click, I don't want to, just turn, I don't want to find a face, to turn off there. So, spanning hundreds of years and more than 25,000 artworks, 16,000 films and videos, the Bantha collection is an eclectic mix of work across the globe through its primary concentration is on earth art from the 20th century and 21st centuries the collection also includes significant historical artworks including queen and ming queen and ming dynasty chinese painting 17th century european painting and 19th century folk art history of the Bay Area is represented by abstract paintings and conceptual art since the 1960s and bolstered by a recent gift of African-American quilts. 
what has been and what could be, presents just a small fraction of works from the collection. Yet as part of a larger museum-wide effort to make the collection more publicly accessible, for teaching, learning, and enjoyment for the first time ever, it's like Star Wars for the first time ever on the lower level galleries, will be dedicated to showing the collection in long-term exhibitions. Go again, long-term, but as being in, and what could be, and to continue, Pamper is committed to building a more expansive art histories giving more space to work by women, artists from global diasporas, LGBTQ+, and other historically marginalized communities. How can we intentionally build a more inclusive museum collection that better reflects our communities, engages in critical dialogue, and forges new art historical narratives? This exhibition suggests a framework for looking back in time, while also imagining the future of the collection, acknowledging the historical exclusions that have created imbalanced collections and calling for corrective action. Through intergenerational thematic groupings, the exhibition questions what has been and what could be for women as artists in subjects, landscape and the environment, East Bay artists the still life genre and the representative black artists inside the collection. And this has been organized by senior curator, Anthony Graham. A long, long time ago, in a universe far away, we take this journey. I don't know, it looks like it begins here, right? this more fun for you with a little bit of filter. Good. This. Uh, those are good. Aren't they good? Mm -hmm. Sparkly. I don't like those. These are your favorites. Love it's by emotion. Sorry, the app hiccuped. No, I don't like this. I'm just looking for the fun filters. No, not stickers. We don't want stickers, we don't want drawing. Favorites? That's a favorite. I don't want that one. Uh, all the filters. I don't see the ones that I'm looking for. Just these smiley faces. There used to be some really good filters here. I don't know where they are. What a boring video. It's no fun. Can I take out all of the good ones? They just left these funny faces in here. I don't want the funny faces. No funny faces. All sorts of funny faces. One to fault. It's color. Maybe it's a different button. Information. Text for chat. Color. Beauty. Anything beauty? Yes. 
Here they are. Let's do this. there for you. You had to do it the right way. <laughs> Sorry about the issue. This is the L20 gallery, and the exhibition starts here. This is my turn off and flip that. Turn off and flip that. Red lid. My philosophy, uh, maybe because I naturally read a lot and I'm a reader, not an artist first, or a reader first, artist second maybe, I'm always looking at the title. And my idea is let's try to look at the title and see if it fits up, especially for abstract art. Sun Mad 2 by Esther Hernandez. Now, See, it is like a Mexican Day of the Dead type of raisin ad. And insecticides, miticides, herbicides, fungicides. This is definitely a political statement about modern day agriculture and about sun made. And yes, I quite like it. Now next we have Laura Aguilar who died in 2018 and Hernandez died in 1944 and the museum purchased this to ground it untitled so we can see here untitled so the art speaks for itself oh no it's grounded untitled well yes I don't know why grounded is added, but you can see up. We are probably not following Twitches. This is, uh, I don't know exactly what that is. I know we don't want to violate Twitch, but this is an art museum, so we apologize. Roberta's Construction Art Number One. Mm -hmm. And I assume Lynn Hirschman Lesson is still alive, so she may be watching right now. And. This is her take on Roberta Brightmore, who I've never heard of. And it is very interesting multimedia collage. And it reminds me of looking like Denae, but it couldn't be Denae because it's 1975. And it gives you specific instructions, like from a magazine. And it 
is interesting. You contrast the visual effects with the written description here. We can give it a themed whoosh. Whoosh, whoosh. This is black and white. We actually prefer the color. But I like the idea that she includes this, she relates it with these things. And if it is a construction project, Lynn Ashley Masson, thank you. I found that quite enjoyable. And Tampa the Soren also still arrived. Turn truth.org. Ferguson, a URL. I haven't seen a URL before for an art piece but it does pose some interesting questions. Using a URL for your art piece. Now, of course, now we all know the web and it makes all sense, um, but in the future, will there be an internet? Will it have web addresses? Will these web addresses actually work? Will there be an archive somewhere? <laughs> so it will show its technological age at some point of time if we are lucky and we make it past the internet and go on to something else. And I'm sure truthout.org will disappear at some point of time. But we hope that this archival pigment print lives on somewhere, as well as its title. We can see an 8 by 10 format an iPad screen showing an image from an independent journalism truthout.org. Tear gas on the streets of Ferguson, Missouri after protests of Michael Downs Brown's unjust death by police. So it's a very political COVID-19 new resident of it was 19, 2017. So they're saying how COVID and and whatnot, and a photograph of a iPad picture. I don't know why they put it on photographed an iPad screen. But yes, that was probably available to her. And I just, we don't really see anybody. We just see the tear gas. And they will wonder, this was the age of the internet, and someone actually titled their picture with an internet title, which is great, because you find out more of it. So, maybe there's a whole movement of artwork that actually has a URL on the internet for its title, which you could say is a marketing gimmick, but it's also a sign of the times. Hell no, don't go. 1964, Fran Herndon died in 2020. What a year to die. Maybe Fran got COVID, but in midst of Fran's memory, we see these pictures, a collage. The question is, who are these people? What are they doing? I'm sure there's a story behind these faces that she might have wanted to tell or just now. This is obviously military, so it's a military scene, and this person raising their hands if they were in court, this person is a musician, and this person is dressed up with a tie, and they are holding, I wonder what it is, are they holding something? I don't know, can you tell? They're holding someone else's hand who's shadowed, so it's a very interesting man, looking at you like that. Hmm. Very interesting, this collage. I suppose there's some political message and Fran Herndon maybe had a interview talking about this. Now, here we go. Cut de visite of Sojourner Truth with a photograph of her grandson on her lap. 
1863. Is this a real photograph? I believe so. Akron, Ohio. Shout out to Akron. So, albumin print. I didn't, I don't even know what albumin is. But here you can see. These are some of the earliest photographs, I guess. I don't know, 1863, perhaps. There you go. And taking a photograph was probably a big deal back then because photographs were not all that common. But it is actually very detailed. If you look at it closely, you can see the detail in it. Surprising, I was not expecting to see that here. So, Lava Thomas, born in 1858, still alive, I suppose. Jimmy L. Ler, well, that's very, Miss Jimmy L. Ler, very straight to the point. Now, this is a drawing, you'll see it. Pencil drawing, based on a police photograph from a series of black women who were on the Montgomery bus boycott. So we're taking a very historical image of a police photograph from a controversial arrest that was unfounded. If you look at later human rights of people who stood up for what was right, they encountered the police and they braved the authorities. And here you go. 769. Quite a mug shot there, right? And imagine her being there and thinking, yes, I'm being arrested, but I am standing up for the rights of what is right and what should be for us to be able to ride on the bus like everybody else, because we should not be second-class citizens. And that is an important thing. And I'm sure, hopefully, she got a fair trial and the artist portrays her, as you can see, these detailed pencil strokes and turn. And you've got, you see, you've got the little flowers on her shirt and angst on her face. And Miss Jimmy L. Moe is captured in an even more artistic, brave format. So she braved the bus boycott and now immortalized in this painting. What was really going through her eyes? Maybe she was just there because of a friend, or did she really believe in it? You would need to research the story of Jimmy L. Lowe to know more. Now in the future, my phone will have an AI assistant and it can bring up a quip and say, oh, Jimmy L. Lowe was the ringleader of them, or she was something or something like that. But anyways, wow. <laughs> Talk about going back in time. I'll stand back because this one is good. But you can see this one is 1603 to 1606. Old Testament, so I think they did a lot of Old Testament rather than the actual decapitation. You see the aftermath. Oh. I'm not sure of this story from the Old Testament, but we go back in time to 1603. You can see up oh, there. It's quite amazing, huh? Decapitation story. I'm not aware of it. Amazing. We've got the light in this place very good here. I don't know, we're not run out of battery, but I'm a fine, I don't know how old the frame is. Although that one was Neil Gwynn in character of St. Catherine, and this one is Truth, revering the artifice of painting. So there you have, it's almost like an artist's reflection on the feeling of art itself. You can see that. And this one, a person portraying 
say St. Catherine, so it's time vast in history, and I'm just amazed about how vibrant these colors are after so many years. Even, I must assume, this is the original frame. Who made it? Yes. And you see them in a triptych, is that what it is? You don't want to run into that triptych of those. You could snapshot it. Now this we have here with John's friend. John Petit Catherine France. This is 1868. Pourquoi native Escada? Why born enslaved? Reads the inscription on the base of this dramatic rendering of a black woman. The work was executed in many editions and many materials, such as this bronze and white slate circulation of this sculpture. Produced in 1868, attitudes in France which outlawed slavery. Originally titled La Negresse, the depiction of an anonymous black woman demonstrates the persistence representing black figures in relation to slavery instead of as free citizens. You can see that. Can I hit the zoom in on it? Yes, we can see that. The zoom lens. as a slave, a statement on slavery, which I think they said had been outlawed by the time that this had been done. Very interesting. This is safe for the artwork, I presume. Now, do we go this way? Cover the walls this way, or do we, I think we go back here. Nancy Sparrow, Goddess, 1965. 1985, sorry. Feminist artwork. Egyptian, very ancient Olympic runner. Hand stamp, so. We've got a 1985 collage of Nancy Sparrow, who died unfortunately in 2009. But you can see here, this artwork here, she has, you can see. So, it is modern, contemporary, but based on ancient art. So I guess it's a journey. of artistic technique, it shows arrows, it's, I don't know if they're, they are, uh, the structure. Now, my guess, this is just a hunch, I don't know, did she mean for all of these to go in this position, or are they supposed to go in one long corridor and they didn't have the room for it, or is it all site specific? I'm not sure. carved wood and leather. So there we go. Hands of Grossman is a head encased in leather. A bit naughty, I would say. Well, what is she trying to say? That is the head of Nancy Grossman with leather. Tantric painting, portrait of Kali, 2000. 
2007 paint on paper. So, unknown artist as I know. I don't see the Tantric painting. I see a. Am I looking at the right thing? So, if you look here, you can see the reflection of me, but that is, you can see that. Does that say tantric painting to you? I don't know. Is there something else going on? Is it a mystery into another parallel universe? And there we are. Now you see, you'll see a theme here, Tacconi, 1971, all along the Now Deborah died in 2010. And I really like this. It's got Prisma. Prisma. If you're wondering, download Prisma. It's so much more fun than just the regular Twitch app. It's like having a Streamlabs OBS in your hand, and even better. But you probably already know that. Yes. Create video art out of real art. All right. Enough of that. Zana, untitled charcoal, died in 1999. A lot about the funding, not too much about it, but yes, it's untitled. So it's up to you to decide what it is and why the large fan. And we could take this one and see, are there Im is there a hidden image? Put it in one of these filters, right? Is that better? Or do you like this? Take this. It's almost. See, that would be a triptych, right? We would have this. We would have that. Mysterious triangular triptych, but it only, you only get the triangle if you turn on the filter. Now, Christina Kroll, Small Offerings, 2017, born 1985, so still alive. 